hit it. Meet me at the intersection. It's time to make a great connection. Faith, find a family meet. So come on in and take a seat at Sundays at the intersection. Woo. What are you sending me? I'm trying to read a news thing. Can't help it, it's noisy. I love noisy girls, you know. Look how sweet. Stop! That's three already. Stop it. Well, I can't help it. I want you to see her. I'm reading. Look at her belly. That's four pictures of the same thing. Okay, fine, fine, fine. You've got three cats yourself. I do have three cats. Cat, fine. Do you even have, have any pictures? You know what? I have a bunch of pictures of prints. Why just so. prints? You have three. I know, but I just have a, I have a special place in my heart for him. So here, look. I have them all in a row. You some video. Fine. Here, look, look, look. All right, so that first one's inside. All right, so I tore up the wall. I, my, that was, that was me. Okay. I pushed my chair back too fast. Anyway, that's Aww. him. Yeah. Oh, look, this is when he, he came home, finally. Finally? Well, okay, so he wanders. He's a free spirit. Let's just call it that. And I gave him his special food. I gave all, you know. So he gets special food. Well, the other ones do too, but it's kind of like a feast when he comes home because okay. I don't... Well, because I want to make sure that we don't run out of the special food for him. So and what and so, what's he doing here? Oh, okay, that's a little bit. That was like ten minutes after he came in. <laughs> he wanted to go again. So he oh, already I, wants to go not, go out. I love out the him door. so much. You so are you serious? So like, does he? What does he do? Does he just walk around the neighborhood? I think so. I mean, like people randomly will stop like by our yard when I'm like sitting on a porch and be like, "Hey, we saw Prince the other day," and then someone else will be like, "Oh yeah, I came up on my." They love him. Oh, this other, these other people, they um, didn't realize he was my cat. Took him to the vet, got him revaccinated. So now he has two files on him one of Prince and one of Biscuit. They called him Biscuit. They, yeah. You have neighbors who literally okay, that renamed was before, your cat but, but and took him I, to the vet. But now they know too that he's just a free spirit. He just goes. And so, you know, I just kind of hope he comes home and that he's safe. And, and so you favor him. You favor I the don't one that fa wanders the neighborhood. I don't favor him. I love Charlie and I love Puck and they just hang out at home and they're good and they're in and out too. But I just, you know, Prince is just, he's special because I just, you never know when he's going to come home. That's all. Well, fair enough. You know, actually, there is a Bible story. There is. That talks about a dad that's, you know, so it, happy when his son comes Yes, home. and the similar. son that's at home that he loves. So let's talk about the, the prodigal, prodigal son. son. Bible story. Yeah. Okay. The parable of the prodigal son. It is a great story. It's one of my favorites. It is a great story. Yeah, I'll try not to be emotional. I'm, I'll leave the crying to you. What? <laughs> you emotional? I love this story. Yeah, I'm okay. a big baby. Yeah. Anyway, it's a parable, which is a story that Jesus would use to help people know how to live their lives and mm -hmm. help them understand God's love for them. Yeah. So this parable was found in Luke 15, and it's yep. about a dad and his two sons. Mm -hmm. Lisa's going to tell us about it. Well, you know what? Uh, as families go, sometimes... Uh, one or more of the kids uh, kind of wants to go and do their own thing, and that's what the younger son wanted to do. The younger son was like, you know what? I need to hit the road, Jack, and I'd like my inheritance uh, early that his dad was pretty wealthy, and he just wanted uh, his money right then. And so his dad let him make that decision, and he left, and he promptly wasted it all. Wasted all the money. All of it. Mm. Yep, he did all kinds of things. Um, he, I'm sure he had a wonderful, fun time. Until the money ran out, and then he found himself feeding pigs, Aww. homeless, and ashamed and frightened and scared to go home. Because hmm. he thought his dad would, I guess, reject him or yeah. be mad at I him. I mean, he, in, in his mind, he thought, well, his dad has every reason to reject me. Mm -hmm. In fact, the only reason why he even went home was because he thought maybe if his dad accepted his apology, then maybe his dad would at least let him be a servant hmm. and his own house. Wow. Man, a lot of kids do that today. They're so afraid that their parents are going to not accept them. They're afraid to tell them something wrong that they've done that we're going to stop loving them in some way. You guys, this story illustrates unconditional love. That means love that has no conditions. It, it means love without any strings attached. It means love where you don't have to do X, Y, Z, and then we love you. We love you all the time, kids. That's what parents do. And that's what this dad did. And so this son came coming back and my Favorite part of the story is it says the dad saw the son from a long way off, hmm. which means he probably was like looking for him every day. Just 
you know, way down there. And then my second favorite part is it says he saw him from a long way off and he ran to his son. Mm -hmm. Didn't wait for him, wasn't standing there tapping his foot while I'm getting ready to give him the lecture he deserved. He ran to him, threw his arms around him. And oh my goodness, the son started to tell him the speech he had all prepared. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna. And the dad says, We're gonna celebrate. Mm -hmm. Call the servants. Go get everything together. You were lost and now you're found. I love you. Son, I'm so glad you're there. And then the older son, meanwhile, heard about it. He's in the fields working. Actually Here's working. In fact, the celebration. He, the only reason he knew his brother was home was because he heard the party happening. Well, so you can imagine how he felt. Yeah, he he had some valid complaints, and he went to the dad and said, "What do you? I followed all the rules. I've done everything you've asked me to do. I didn't run off. I've stayed here. I've even asked for a little party, and now he's done the worst thing ever. And you're acting like it's the best thing ever." And this is when the dad responds in a way that's way more wise. And it's the parable. It's the meaning of how God responds to us. Mm. When we're being faithful and we're angry that he's shown grace to people who have made some poor life's decisions. And the father says, yes, you've been faithful. You've done all those things. But today we celebrate because your brother was lost but now he's found. You guys, keep trying to be faithful. Keep trying to do the right thing. But we always have to celebrate when someone finally says, my goodness, God is good and I want to come home to him and be loved. Remember, you are never, never, never far from home. God is watching as you come back to him. It's a great thing. Thanks, Lee. The sum, 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 sum summary. Ding! Okay, so I did get a little emotional with Lisa telling that parable, but it's hard not to. It's an emotional story. You can see the dad looking and waiting for his younger son to come home. You know, like a lot of Jesus' parables, this one had a twist. You would think the story was going to focus on the older son who stayed home, who did what his dad told him, who worked in the fields and was a good and faithful son. But instead, Jesus tells us about the younger son who ran off, spent all that money, didn't live like he should have lived. And yet, when he came home, his dad was there waiting on him with open and welcome arms. That's like our Father in Heaven. He'll always forgive us. When we're ready to go back to him, he'll be there waiting on us with open and welcome arms. So until we see you again, dream big, trust huge, and love all the time. Hit it. Meet me at the intersection. It's time to make a great connection. Faith on a family meet. So come on in and take a seat at Sundays at the intersection.